Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Patrick from the Babylon JS team, and today I want to talk about a fundamental part of physically based rendering, which is lighting. And by that, I mean image based lighting or IBL. So in IBL, what we're going to do is we're going to take a high definition panoramic image and project it into a cube and then put that into your scene so you can sample the pixel data to light your objects. So let's dive right in so you can see what I'm talking about. Here we've got a very simple scene. Uh, two spheres, both metallic. One is fully reflective, the other is fully rough. And as I rotate the environment here, what you're seeing is the image-based lighting. So how does that work? Uh, basically, if we were ray tracing, what we would do is we would sample the material's roughness, and that would tell us how big of an area of the IBL to sample. And we would take those tones, average them together, and then we would return an intensity and a color to apply back to the material. In real-time rendering, however, that's way too expensive. We can't do that for every pixel 60 frames a second. So uh, we want to use a shortcut. And in, in that shortcut, we're going to use a file format called DDS. Um, and you can see here, we've got two uh, different types of files here, a DDS and an ENV, and I'll go into both of those individually. So why would we use DDS? Um, the reason being is that DDS offers us a MIP chain. And what is a MIP chain? So a MIP chain is, uh, where I take an image and for every MIP in the chain, I reduce the image by half. And so if I start out with a 1K image, the next MIP would be 512 and 256 and 128 and so on. So why is that important? Um, let me jump into this other model so you can see very quickly. Uh, we've got these three rows of spheres. The top row is metallic white. Then the middle and bottom rows are dielectric white and black. Uh, on the left, we've got fully reflective or roughness zero. On the right, we have fully rough, roughness one. So if I were going to do this with ray tracing for every sphere, I would have to say, what is the roughness? That is the area I'm going to sample, average, and apply back. Uh, with a MIP chain, uh, every level you're seeing is a different MIP chain level. So uh, rather than saying, what is the roughness? Here's my sample size, average, and apply. All I do is say, here's my roughness grab a different MIP and apply. So there's a lot less calculation going on there. And that's how it allows us to do this 60 frames per second. So how do we make this? If I'm starting with an HDR file from like uh, Adobe site or HDRI ha Haven, uh, how do I start with an HDR EXR and then get a DDS out of it? So for that, we're gonna use a couple of different types of software. Uh, one would be IBL Baker, which you can get free on GitHub. Uh, another would be LIS, which is by Nald, and it's a paid program. So uh, I wanna take you through that process now. So let me jump over into LIS, and uh, I'm gonna go full screen here so that we don't cover up anything. Uh, so this is what LIS looks like. This is an image that I downloaded from Adobe's uh, HDR uh, library. and Basically, what we're going to do is walk through a few settings really quickly. So the first thing I'm going to do here is go over to Preferences. I'm going to enable Legacy DDS Header Encoding because we require that for Babylon. Uh, I'm going to jump over to Export next. And I don't care about Panorama or Sphere. I definitely want a cube map. And we talked about DDS, so I'm going to set DDS. And then I also want to set it to 32 foot float so that I get all of the image that I, uh, all of the data that I need. Uh, I don't care about radiance or irradiance, I just care about the specular for specular reflection. So once that's set, we're good there. I'm gonna jump back to the main tab. Um, here is our radiance and irradiance, which we don't care about, but we do want specular, so we have to enable specular. So uh, now that we can see specular, there are a couple of options that we have to set here. Uh, the first one is the function, and we want a GGX function, and the power drop, we want log two. Uh, and so, now what we're going to do is uh, a MIP offset of two, which is standard for Babylon. And then the user scale tells me about where middle roughness is going to be in the MIP chain. So uh, in our testing, we found a value of uh, 3.4 works pretty well. And so um, I also want to set our, our map size. And so I'm going to click that so I can set a, a manual size of 5.12. And so 512 is, is probably about the sweet spot. Uh, if we go larger, you're not gonna get a lot of uh, benefit for that, but you're gonna, gonna get a much larger size of the file. So about 512 pixels per face works out pretty well. Uh, you can go to 256, saves you a little bit of, say, uh, of size. 
um, but you do sacrifice a little bit of resolution. So if you have a lot of metallic reflective objects, you'll probably want to go with a slightly larger IBL. If most of your uh, materials are dielectric or rough, then you could probably get away with a 256 and save a little bit of size. So now that I've done all that, uh, you choose a, a, an export path and then hit export. And it's going to send a, a, a quick export out. Um, so now let me go back to our scene that has the uh, spheres in it. And I'm going to grab the file that I just exported as the DDS, and I'm just going to drag and drop it here. And you can see this file here. Uh, when I drag and drop, we're going to apply that environment to the scene. So that's that's as complicated as it is. It's a few settings. Once you learn them, it's very easy to go through them. Um, but what else can we do here? So uh, you remember I talked about two different file types, uh, DDS and ENV. So let me jump back here. Uh, you can see I've got a 256 DDS, which we talked about size and a 512 DDS. So you can see there is a little bit more detail in the DDS at 512, which is exactly what we would expect. So you can see we're losing a little bit of image resolution here, so I would probably want a 512. But you can see up here, we also have, it's 32 megabytes for a 512 DDS. And for a 256 DDS, it's much better at eight megabytes, but it's still eight megabytes of download. So what about ENV? Um, so let me go back to here. So again, 32 megabytes of DDS. I'm going to click over here on an ENV, and you can see the image didn't change, but it's only 611K. And then what about a 256? 256 DDS, 8 megs. 256 ENV is only 199K. So what is an ENV? So an ENV is a file format that we, uh, that we came up with for Babylon just for IBLs. Um, and basically, we're using an RGBD compression of the HDR image so that it is much smaller uh, and works really well with our engine. So how do you make one? Well, the easiest way to make one is once you have a DDS and you bring it in, um, if I open up our inspector here and come over to our tool section here, um, I can generate an ENV texture right here. So I just click this button it's going to generate the texture and then ask me to save it. So then I can save the ENV and there it goes. We'll get rid of this and uh, I'll go to my downloads here and we will drag the ENV right back in. And then you can see it looks exactly the same. So it's very quick to do. Uh, it's very small from that standpoint, um, but there's probably an easier way we can do this, right? So. You know, we start with our HDR and we go into lists or we go into IBL Baker and we create a DDS and we have to drag it into the scene and then we have to go to our tools and export an ENV and there's just a lot of steps there. Um, there's a lot of things to remember, like did I set it to 32-bit float? Did I, you know, enable legacy header encoding? Uh, there's just a bunch of things that you can forget along the way. So we wanted to make this easier. So. Uh, one of our best, uh, our engineers, Sebastian, came up with this amazing feature that uh, is new for our, our engine right now. Uh, so uh, let me go back to uh, the standard environment here. And that way you can see this happen in real time. So what I'm going to do is we grab our HDR image, our original Canyon image, and you can see this is just an HDR and I'm dragging and dropping it right on the scene. So now uh, what Sebastian has done is created a real time reflection map. And so uh, he's taken that HDR and he's doing all the things we did in LIS just in real time. So now this is a real time uh, image based lighting. And then the next thing I do is open up my tool palette and I can export my ENV texture again. So I've gone from a bunch of different steps all the way down to just drag and drop an HDR on the scene, save out the ENV. So uh, we really wanted to make that a much simpler process. Uh, we've been doing this a, uh, for a long time where I go through these steps every time uh, and it gets a little frustrating, you know, I, when I forget one little thing, like I, I don't have a 32-bit float or I don't set my user scale correct and, and I see it right away and it's like, ugh, I gotta go back and re-export and, and it gets frustrating. So the ability to take an HDR and drag, drag and drop right into the sandbox 
right on top of your model and then generate an ENV that's really small out of that is is super fun. Uh, it's, it's a very big time saver for us. And we hope that uh, it solves a lot of problems for anyone who is trying to build some IBL, may not know all the process. We want to take as much pain out of the process as possible. So uh, we hope you enjoy this feature. Uh, hope you learned something about IBL and environment lighting in Babylon here. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Uh, let us know what you think about the video with a like or dislike, uh, what you would like, like us to do in the future. And we will make sure to put in the description links to all of the assets that we used, um, some IBLs for you, some uh, GLBs for you to, to test with, uh, and the playground that we had that we had showed with the IBLs. So hope you have a great day and we will see you next time. Take care.